Right. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Guy Ziskind. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Enigma. And I want to tell you today how you can build scalable, privacy-preserving uh, smart contracts on Ethereum. So the problem with blockchain is that it's completely public. Everything you put on the blockchain is there for everyone to see and also forever. That means that you cannot use sensitive data on the blockchain today. And that's a big issue. I'm sure you would all agree that any application today, whether centralized or decentralized, is going to need to use sensitive data in some form or another. And obviously, this greatly limits the potential applications that we can use with the technology. So if you want to be a bit more technical, uh, smart contracts, which is the unit of execution that we have in blockchains, gives us correctness, but it does not give us privacy. Correctness means that if you're running a computation, then you can be, then you can be guaranteed that you're going to get the right result, and no one can tamper with it. And that's great. That's why we're really excited about blockchain technology. But we need something stronger. And a stronger definition is what we call secret contracts that provide both, pro both correctness of the execution, but also privacy of the data. So Enigma is the first available platform for you to build secret contracts and execute them. It is the first time that you can actually add and use sensitive information on the blockchain without compromising decentralization. Um, Enigma works by using privacy enhancing technologies that allow you to basically compute over encrypted data. That's the main secret sauce. The second part, for scalability, we take the position that execution should be separated from consensus. Blockchains are really good at reaching consensus on small amounts of public data, but they're not good at keeping privacy and they're not good at scalable execution. So we have a long history of, uh, of actually doing this. Uh, a few years ago, we came up with these two ideas, and we published this in two papers, uh, Decentralizing Privacy and the original white paper for Enigma. And these papers uh, currently stand on uh, more than 500 citations combined. So they really become uh, a cornerstone uh, in the space. And really, they, are, they were the first to crystallize the ideas that if you want to have privacy in the blockchain, you got to use some additional cryptography. You got to use something that allows you to, to compute over encrypted data. And on top of that, if you really want to have scale, you got to separate execution from consensus. And you know, I was here this week, and it was really inspiring to see that so many other projects are actually taking that approach right now. So maybe it's taken a few years, but it seems that the industry is finally uh, coalescing into the idea that uh, execution and consensus should be separated, and that privacy for smart contracts is really important, and we should not settle just for transactional privacy. So I'm mostly going to talk today about the Enigma Discovery Network. This is the first network that we're uh, pushing out right now. Uh, the network has all the great features I told you. It allows you to execute these secret contracts and at scale, but it also has other important properties. It's permissionless completely. It's economically incentivized, which means that we use some form of proof of stake model. And I think what's mostly important for developers here and for this talk is that it's compatible with Ethereum. We don't want to make you choose between Ethereum and Enigma. There's enough of, you know, copycat blockchains in the space. What we want to do is make sure you can build the best decentralized applications that you can. So we build a very seamless bridge, and I will talk about it later on, about how you can actually combine uh, public execution on Ethereum with private execution on Enigma. So the best way to yeah, the, be the best way to explain the protocol is for to discuss the stakeholders. So as usual, we have developers that write code, we have users that then interact with these secret contracts with that code, and we, where things kind of change is, is that we have workers. Workers are basically the nodes in our network that are running and executing secret contracts. 
Uh, we use this definition to kind of separate them and not to confuse them with Ethereum nodes and miners that reach consensus. The basic architecture uh, is as follows. Uh, as I said, developers deploy secret contracts to the network. Uh, there's, uh, users can then submit tasks, tasks the equivalent of uh, Ethereum transactions. Uh, and that basically then gets executed on the Enigma network and final consensus is reached on Ethereum. For developers, uh, we support two modes of execution, two modes of, I'm sorry, of writing contracts. You can use Solidity, which many of you know, or you can use uh, a WebAssembly enabled language, primarily Rust. Uh, we're keeping Solidity for backwards compatibility, but uh, actually Rust and WebAssembly have a lot more benefits. We're seeing the industry go in that direction. And so if you really want to enjoy all of the benefits and scale that the system can provide, you should probably use the WebAssembly route. From a user perspective, once a secret contract is deployed, the user can interact with that secret contract by submitting tasks, which are again, they're the equivalent of Ethereum transactions. The main difference is that um, a task can include encrypted inputs that the user supplies. Uh, under the hood, what really happens is that the user commits uh, a proof of the transaction of the task uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. That actually helps us reach consensus on the ordering of the task so that the Enigma network does not need to do this. And we reuse that trick all over, all over the place. Whenever there's something small that we need agreement on, and it's not a heavy computation, we do that on Ethereum. But the actual execution then happens on Enigma, which is a separate network. The way that works is we start with a, the user starts with a task, right? He sends the task to the Enigma network, but which nodes is, is the task propagated to? We're not using the naive approach that current blockchain use, where everyone computes everything that is counterproductive to scalability. Instead, we have a proof of stake model where we sample a group, a group of workers, a constant size group of workers to actually execute that task. And those, and, and those group of workers are always um, weighted by stake, which means that if you stake more tokens, you are more likely to get selected to, to more computations. And that really increases scale. That gives us a form of sharding that is uh, fairly simple to implement and that we're going to have up and running in about two months. And then that uh, quorum, these committees of workers, they actually run these computations and uh, at the end of an epoch, so for performance reasons, it's not just one computation that this group is assigned to, it's actually a group of computations uh, that are bounded by time in an epoch. And at the end of the epoch, the workers submit the results back to Ethereum. Ethereum only does very small verification, making sure all of the state changes are correct. And if that's the case, the workers get uh, incentivized. If not, they get penalized and slashed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a bit deeper about the, what a secret contract execution looks like internally. What's important to understand here is that each secret contract has an encrypted state. That's like, a, that's like an Ethereum state for contracts, but the difference is that this is end-to-end -end, uh, end -end encrypted. When a computation comes in, then the, the current encrypted state goes in, basically lives in the network, and the workers that are running the execution, they can update the state however they see fit based on the computation, of course, and then they can spit out a new modified updated encrypted state. Um, in addition, users can supply encrypted inputs, users can supply encrypted inputs and then get encrypted outputs that are only selectively revealed to them. Now what's really important in this slide is how we bridge to Ethereum. We have a third type of output, which is the Ethereum callback. Basically, if you're a secret developer, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're a secret contract developer, you can add a, ret a special return statement. That return statement can, can take the output of the secret contract that just executed on Enigma, call another smart contract on Ethereum, 
with the <clears throat> with the output from Enigma as an input to that to that smart contract. That completes the full cycle. So if to give you a concrete example, if you have a voting smart contract, we do know how private voting, how hard it is to achieve that in a good way on Ethereum. So what you can do, you can have the private voting happen on Enigma. On Enigma, users can supply their encrypted votes. The actual tally function runs on Enigma workers. And then at the end of that, you can commit that result back to a smart, as input to another smart contract in Ethereum that can do whatever business logic with those results that it wants. All right, uh, let's uh, switch gears a bit. So far I told you a lot about how Enigma architecture works and that we have encrypted computation, but that was kind of hand wavy, right? Let me explain to you how we actually protect privacy in the network. So for discovery right now, we're using trusted execution environments, or T's, to actually achieve these privacy guarantees. T's are basically a secure region in the processor that can hide any data and anything that goes inside of a computation from even the host. So a malicious host cannot see what they're computing over. Uh, it gives us great scalability guarantees. It gives us uh, strong privacy guarantees. But we're actually thinking about how we can do better. There are other privacy preserving technologies that are available today that are purely cryptographic. This is actually a good time to say that when Enigma started, and I was a student at MIT, my thesis was on how we can achieve privacy preserving smart contracts using secure multi-party computation, or MPC, which is one of these techniques. MPC is uh, a distant cousin to fully homomorphic encryption. They both try to achieve the, the goal of computing over encrypted data, but because MPC is still orders of magnitudes more scalable, we are focusing on developing that. One, one final note on ZK SNARKs and STARKs. There's, there's a, a, a big misconception about these technologies. They're an amazing technology, but at the same time, ZK star, SNARKs and STARKs don't actually allow us to compute over encrypted data. What they allow us is that if we trust someone with the data, that someone can then prove a computation over that data without actually revealing the, the data to anyone else. But you still gotta trust someone with the data, and in the context of smart contract, this doesn't work, because in, when you execute smart contract on the blockchain, the nodes are untrusted. You can't trust them to actually see the data. So ZK SNARKs and STARKs are, with the exception of, of, of very specific use cases like transactional privacy, they are usually explored for scalability and not for privacy. Long story short, we need something like MPC. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. give you a quick background about how that works. Uh, I'll try to go, I, I can't go into too many details, but I'll try to, get, to give you the main idea. So MPC works uh, in this paradigm. Let's assume first that we have an ideal, ideal world. In this ideal scenario, we have one trusted machine, a godlike machine that we can send any computation to and any sensitive data, and we can trust that machine to always produce the right results and never to leak the data to anyone. This is obviously not possible in the real world. Um, T's, trusted execution environments, really get us to the limit of what's possible with that, but it's still not perfect. If we want a perfect solution, we need cryptography. So MPC comes and says, you know, maybe you can't trust one machine, but if you can trust a network of computers where all of the, net, all of the nodes in the networks don't have to be trusted, but as long as there is at least one honest node in that network, then you can actually run secure computation. You can actually run any computation and achieve both privacy of the data, everything remains encrypted, and you can get the right result. It's an amazing, it, it seems almost impossible and counterintuitive, but we actually know that from the 80s. So let me walk you through a simple example of how that works. Let's imagine we have a very small network of three computers, and they're gonna do MPC to solve the problem of uh, computing over encrypted data. So first of all, we need to find out how can we store data in this network. Storing works by a process called secret sharing. It's actually not that complicated, but I, I'm not gonna explain it here. 
But the main idea is that you take a piece of data, let's say that data is called X, and then you split it into different encrypted shares and only send one encrypted share to each computer. So the first node gets X1, the second X2, the third X3. All of these are independently encrypted. You can do the same with any, any amount of data that you want, let's say Y. And now let's run a simple computation. So let's say we want, we want to run addition. Well, it turns out that addition comes for free. Because of the properties of secret sharing, all you have to do to compute the addition of X plus Y is ask each one of these uh, computers to just combine the numbers together locally, and that's it. And then when you want to decrypt the result, what you have to do, you have to send all of the shares of the data back to someone, that someone having all of the shares in one place can decrypt the information. But an amazing thing happened here. These computers have run a computation. They don't know the X's, they don't know the Y's, and they don't know the Z's. All they saw, if you probe into, if you zoom into one of these computers, all you see is encrypted data. And yet, this guy got the, the decrypted result. So that's the basic of MPC when it comes to addition. Multiplication is more complicated, but I do want to go at least on a high level of how it works. So for multiplication, it turns out that we need something else. We need something called multiplication triplets. Multiplication triplets, that's the A, B, C, uh, they are correlated randomness. So A and B are just random numbers that are randomly generated independently. But C is correlated because it's the product of A times B. OK? And now every node has, has uh, these triplets. These triplets are independent of the data, so they can actually be computed a priori. Like you can put a, a, a supercomputer, or these computers can work overnight and just generate many, 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 many of these A, B, and Cs. The reason is that these A, B, and Cs are then used as a one-time pad, and they cannot be reused. So you really need many of these pre-processed for a computation. So now let's do the actual computation. Uh, we want to compute x times y. What happens here is that each node takes uh, a one-time pad of their share of x and y. The reason they do this is because they, they need to share these with each other, which is what happens here. And then when they share it with each other, they can, because they have, each one of them has all the shares, they can decrypt uh, a number called D and a number called E. D and E are basically a one-time pad of X and Y. Why is this important? Because if we had not done this step, then all the nodes would have shared their X and Ys together. And by the property of secret sharing, if you get all the X and Ys in one place, you can decrypt the actual information. So this is a must step. We cannot avoid this. But because uh, C equals A times B, and if you then plug that into this uh, equ equation, just by a very simple algebra, and you're going to have to trust me a bit, you're go everything's going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with z equals x, x times y. Or actually, each of these z's is an encrypted share of x times y. And so at this point, you can just send those z's back as with the addition, and hold and behold, we computed multiplication over encrypted data. Now, that might not sound that exciting. I mean, addition, multiplication, fine. How do we get general purpose computing? Well, it's a very known result that with addition and multiplication, you can actually compute any function. And that's what we use, and that's uh, technically what I believe other, other, other techniques like uh, FHE and SNARKs use. That's really all you need. So how does that tie back to Enigma? And what are we working right now to develop next beyond trusted execution environments? So the idea is, the idea is, and there's only a small amount of difference we need to make. The idea is that when a user now submits a task, instead of encrypting those with you know, AES or something and just sending these to the enclaves, what they can do, they can do the secret sharing. They can split these into shares and, and share one and, and send one share of the input to each node in the, in the worker group that is randomly assigned. 
And everything else kind of happens as the same way. The worker groups having the secret shared version of the data, of the inputs, they can get, um, they can take the WebAssembly code and then just go one by line, uh, line by line in the WebAssembly code and interpret that as an MPC protocol. So for example, if you have an instruction, if you, if you have an instruction that says, um, if you have an instruction that says let's multiply two numbers, well, it's actually being interpreted as what I showed you two minutes ago. Now, I'm running out of time a bit, so I, what I do want to focus on is, first of all, that this is live today. We have very serious projects building on us, and there's a whole host of applications where this is relevant. We're talking governance, auction, uh, secret ICOs, and privacy preserving DEXs, and many, many other use cases. And at this point, I want to invite Isan uh, from our team to actually show you a live demo for privacy preserving voting. Thank you. Hi, Ooh, excited to be here. Um, nice to meet you all. My name is Isan Rifkin. I'm a software developer at uh, Enigma and part of the protocol team. Today, I will demonstrate a demo. Um, that is built on top of our application, but before I want to make a claim and kind of walk you through this. So on-chain governance, what is this? Um, so it's kind of at risk if you think about it. So we're trying to build this decentralized world, this decentralized applications, but the more we grow, the more decisions we need to make in a decentralized environment. And this means voting. So if we look today, the common use cases for voting are TCRs, which is token curated registries, and DAOs. By the way, raise your hand if you know what a TCR is. All right, TCR are basically a list, a list of some vendors and reviews. Um, you can think of a decentralized Yelp with tokens. So we have TCRs and we have DAOs that maybe we want to vote on a change of leadership or maybe we want to fork the network. So all of those require voting. Now, usually this scheme is done with something that is called a commit and reveal. It has two steps. The first step would be you hash some vote, you commit this on-chain, and then you have this period of time where you have to reveal the real value on-chain and validate this. Now, there's two, well, it kind of sucks from a user perspective because it requires you to remember to reveal your vote in a very limited uh, period of time. So if you know, a uh, civil project, for example, they send Google Calendar uh, reminders to tell you, hey, don't forget to vote, otherwise it's lost. Um, and also it doesn't prevent vote bribing because you can always see who voted for what. Um, so with the demo I'm demonstrating now, it's kind of solved, right? So basically the, the, the schemes today are um, on-chain voting is subject to automated bribery attacks. You can have different attacks and this is a problem. So now I'll show you a, uh, a demo, and if you want to build something like this, all you need to know is Solidity and JavaScript to interact with our network. So this is a voting application based on top of the Enigma protocol, um, and this is just in the browser, so maybe the internet would work. Oh, okay. So basically we have here uh, accounts, Ethereum accounts at our disposal. Um, they're connected to a testnet and we'll access them programmatically. We have tokens we're using for vote and you buy those tokens and you use them to vote um, at some exchange rate. Then we have uh, stake tokens. I know it's blurred. Those stake tokens is for, for you to do weighted voting. Um, so you kind of, you can stake five tokens and wait with, and vote with a weight of five. Um, after we do this, we need to buy tokens. So we will buy 10 tokens and we will stake five of them into the contract. And now we need to create a poll. So we need to insert some bits of information. First of all, we have quorum. So we will choose a quorum of yes votes divided by the number of total votes should be bigger than 50%. Um, and it's a simple majority. So if we have more than 50, the poll has passed. Then we need to ask a question. So is privacy important in voting? And very topical. And then we need to add some period. We'll say 60 seconds. So we have 60 seconds to vote. Go ahead, create the poll, and then users can start voting. So the first user will go in and say, uh, stake five and say, yes, privacy is important. Um, the timer keeps growing. And most importantly is that the result you can see in the console it's saved encrypted in Ethereum. So just to reiterate, no one, no third party 
sees this information and who voted for what. Um, so this is an important aspect. And then we need to vote again, right? So after this happens, we'll switch an account. This is all testnet, of course. But this is why it kind of happens behind the scene. So we'll stake three tokens and we say, nope, privacy is not important. Again, you can see the result is completely encrypted. And this is how it's stored on chain. Um, so you, again, you don't know who voted what. At the end of this timer, a very important function will happen on our side. This will trigger a computation. The nodes on our network will fetch the state from Ethereum, compute over the encrypted data, tally the results, commit them back on chain, and modify the contract state on Ethereum. Um, and yeah, we can see that it's success. For those of you who keep count, we had five votes saying yes, three votes saying no, so privacy is important. Um, and then the, on the front end, we have this uh, event listener that just simply listens to an event on the Ethereum account, on the Ethereum network, and you know, once the poll is ended, it can update the UI. That's all. All right, so I know we're running out of time, but I just want to just wanna, uh, finalize and tell you some exciting things. Um, secret voting, the demo you just saw, is not just a demo. It's actually being produced by very reputable companies in the space. Uh, we have Aragon and Ocean Protocols actually building privacy-preserving voting on Ethereum right now. Uh, you can actually look at the code if you want. It's live. Another amazing example is machine learning over encrypted data. So Exim Chain, who's working with us, has implemented a scheme where they can uh, classify our credit worthiness, that's what the plane here represents in the diagram, and they can keep the actual weights of the model completely encrypted. So they can hide the model from the network and still continue to train it uh, and get better predictions on whether people's credit is worthiness or not. Um, Enigma is live today. You can work on it, you can build on it. Just go to enigma.co slash protocol and start building. We have documentation, we're open to feedback, the code is open source, everything you need is there. But what's even more exciting that I want to announce today is eggs, Enigma Growth Grants. Enigma Growth Grants is really the best way for you to become involved in the new emerging ecosystem. We're going to work together with the people who apply to grants. We're going to fund this. We're going to help this evolve. And this includes a lot of the core things that we need to make the Enigma platform a, a, an independent, thriving ecosystem. Now, Enigma is exploding right now. It's growing very fast. And there are many ways for you to get involved beyond eggs. Uh, whether you're a developer or a user or, or you want to just run node and stake and earn rewards, all of the information that you need is packed on this slide. Thank you very much.